Good evening. It is evening for me. I have a 13C300, no, C250, a 205, also known as. People get really upset on TikTok when I, I say, how come you don't know the names of them? Because I don't call them by C250, by C300, C350, fourth, blah, blah, blah. it's just too confusing. So the way we call them is by the chassis number. If you work with Mercedes, you know that. This is a 204 with a 271 in it. The 271 Evo. So I will be doing a cam adjusters, both of them, and I will be doing a how-to on how to replace both cam adjusters. Right now I just got a little bit up in the air because I'm gonna pull the belly pants off. First thing you wanna do, pull the belly pants off, pull the belt off, because you're gonna soak the belt and then soak the belly pants. So I'm gonna pull those off right now. Obviously, I'm gonna recover. Be careful of these old zip sticks because they like to break off. So let me take that off. And also, these have been really common lately to be covered in rust due to condensation in the tube. See rust on your dipstick, don't be too worried, just change it out if it bothers you. Alright, we're gonna undo the coils. This one's off. yet because there's still another bolt down here on the side if you can see that over here there's an e10 over there Valve cover off. So we get this out of the way. Undo the cam sensor here. Then the E8s that hold your coils in. Two per coil. sensor on the side of the head down there. Just getting enough slack here to slip out the, uh, the harness here. Okay, go ahead and take your E10s out of your valve covers. Eight millimeter works really good on E10s. Obviously you're gonna need a new valve cover gasket.
you get it loose, don't be afraid to use a little pry action because it's pretty stuck on there. that out these are gonna break most likely if you want to try and save them be my guess but I would just order two of these these are these upper guides I just break them off because I replace them because they're junk get a new one of these now we're gonna pull this off the intake tube and then yeah so let's work on that I also recommend getting a new one of these if you can find one uh, cheap right here because these break right here they have a tendency to break really proud this one probably already broken this pipe right here that runs down here is probably broken so be careful of that unplug this undo this clip now this one's fragile be careful with that one Shop. I don't know why I would just record every repair and just start an archive on your internet for repair videos. I don't know, whatever. Get that one off. Careful of that. Same thing with this one. Kind of got to get under here and just work it in the back a little bit because you're going to pull this off out of here. This one you just squeeze these two red tabs. This is your boost solenoid for your turbo that controls the wastegate. And then I'm gonna do that. Let's see. Now these also help to heat up with a heat gun if you have one, because they can be a real pain in the ass to get off. That one isn't too bad. It's the one on the turbo that's a pain in the butt. You can usually get it off, but getting it on is a pain in the ass. I like to pull the coolant reservoir out of the way. It give you a little bit of space to take these clamps off. So you just go ahead and that right here. There's these tabs right here. Kind of they're really stiff. You gotta pull back. Access down here because you're gonna have to get the seven that runs to the side of this uh, pipe here for this one. So let me find it. There it is. It's kind of down here. It's way down here, underneath straight. So this on the bottom, there's a seven mil that's gonna be there for your for the turbo. Bend this metal out of the way. This heat shielding because you're gonna cut your arm open. 
not gonna have a good time. Make sure you get this really loose because if you only loosen it kind of, the clamp still kind of, when it, when it tries to come over the bulge on the turbo, it, the clamp's just not large enough, so you gotta make sure you really unscrew it. recommend to get this pipe if yours are old this one looks like it's leaking right here this is probably looks broken this one's really common to crack this keeps your heater from working well, not from, you get low heat when that little valve goes dead Barely laid a hand on that one, broke. Oh, unfortunately, I'm gonna need a new one of these. There's also a connector on there. So now that I've pulled it back, I can get to it. Clamps tight again. If you can't rotate it, that means it's too loose. Too, not tight enough. God damn it, not loose enough. <sighs> so you got a coolant leak there. So that was actually leaking on the alternator. So this is either broken, which looks like it. So I need this line here. Obviously, this tube, you can see it was already broken down here. Really common spot. You can see all the oil from before. So use this tube. You're gonna break it. It just happens. Okay, next I'm going to remove the belt with a T. I forget what size it is. Let me grab a T55. I think it's a 60. Maybe it's a 60, but 55 is not the one. want a pin for the tensioner, for the tensioner. Here babe, where's your wallet? In my backpack. Oh, it's a 60, so I'm gonna grab, let's see if I have 60 of one of these. Kind of hard to see. Um, I can't really show the tensioner how it's working right now. Maybe this is a 55. All right, so you tension it, and then on the bottom side there's a hole. Which I always forget where it is too. belt because it's going to get soaked with coolant and oil. If you do not, you probably need one too. Yep. The belt. Evacuate your power steering if you can because you have to take off a line that runs across the front to pull this front cover off here. So I'm going to go ahead and evacuate that.
right, so we got this this evacuated. Got that off, got the intake pipe off. And let's see, what can I work on next? Gotta get the alternator off. I like to do with the alternator is we'll disconnect your battery because you're gonna probably make sparky sparks. down and do the alternator bolts from the top. So what you can do, you can do it from the bottom too. I think I might just do that. Let's get the bottom alternator bolts first because then you can take those out by hand and then you can just work on the upper ones from the top. It'd be a lot easier. So I just reach down here from the side bottom. Got one bolt loose. down here and then uh, getting those top two bolts you can just use a 10 mil they're e e10 e12 so just get on there it's really hard for me to show you <laughs> I can draw a picture I guess bottom one's loose, I got one all the way out, and then I'm going to go ahead and do that by hand. Oh my gosh. Here up top, the alternator. So we'll just go up here to the top. I feel like maybe if you're doing it from the bottom, it'd be easier just to uh, loosen, take the top ones out first, then use a ratchet, electric ratchet on the bottom or some sort of ratcheting thing.
Alternator's out of the way. Behind the alternator is the tensioner plug. Alright, so with the alternator out of the way, you get access to your chain tensioner plug. soft doesn't have anything there and then you just stick a screwdriver through it and you just pry it to the side stick it through oh my gosh stick it through sorry this is crappy angle here but you get the gist of it poke a hole through the middle of that and pry it to the side with your screwdriver Sorry, I just can't show that it's so hard. It's right there. All right, now with that, there's a hole there now that you can stick a, I believe, a 17 mil and then loosen your tensioner after you get it on time. All right, and then one thing I like to do is so get, get, a, get a big coolant catch underneath your car. I don't like using the drain petcock thing you would do because those always break. What I do, they just find the lowest mounted radiator hose. Off. Pop, pop, pop the clip off. Pop the clip. Pop the clip off. Oh my god. Pop the clip off. Pop the clip off and just pull your hose off. We got green coolant in here, so we're really gonna have to flush this. Go ahead and take this upper radiator hose off to the thermostat. Ow, to the thermostat. We're gonna have to pull the hose off the power steering pump here. Get this out a little. Get our handy dandy pliers. And of course, the other clamp that I want to get to is turned to the front of the motor so you can't even get to it. So I'm going after the clamp on the power steering pump.
are gonna lose some power to you. line coming off of the thermostat, not the clipped on one, there's another one with a clamp on it. Bottom area, get that one off. Got another one to the shutoff valve. nipples off. And then you just squeeze this one and probably get it off. Oh. God, I hate these ones. It's like they only use these random, it's like almost like the injector ones. Sensor here. Nice, they busted that up. Lock it in. here. It's a shorter bolt, things like the shortest one that you're going to take off. Put that to the side. Okay, now we're going to work on getting this uh, thermostat and all this off in one piece. So, you have a 40, that might be a 50. So get your 45, or you have two big ones that are attached to this. Go ahead and get ready to take those out. Mm 
one's kind of tucked behind this harness here. Tuesday. Uh, okay. Doke. So now I took the ones all the T45s and then the ones just on the outside perimeter of this plate and then just go ahead and get in here. Give it a good pry. get is your thermostat still on one piece because if you try to remove your thermostat you're gonna break it so it's a 45 volt one two three four to go through the thermostat so one two three four five six e10s and then two t45s on the tops and now you have access to your cam gears so what we're gonna do set it on time you need a 27 mil Every 27 for the crank, and we're gonna set it on time. And the way you know it's on time is it's on time. I'm just kidding. There's gonna be a marks. So there's marks on here. You can go off of. There's marks on the crank down here that say zero. So let's see where we're at. So we're on TDC now. So you have two arrows coming up, two arrows pointing at each other. Then you're at zero on the bottom. So what you want to do is remember where the heck you put your tool to hold it. All right, get your tool. And then this will go in here, just like this. Now it may need some persuasion, depending on how bad these are. So you can see now <coughs> that this arrow is up and this one is down. They're not directly pointed at each other. So I'm going to have to wiggle these. So. See what I just use as a hammer and just beat it. So flat. Grab two of the bolts. What am I doing? I don't forget what channel it is. This is my channel. I can do whatever the hell I want. Until these bolts line up. Tighten those down. Those are just two bolts that are from the front cover. So we're gonna take this off, get this out of the way. And now you can break the cans loose. There's a couple things we still need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just crack these loose real quick. Oh, on top of these arrows, they have arrow, arrow. And then you have lines on the back of your camshafts back here. That'll be pointing. So you have these lines here pointing to this arrow. This line pointing to this arrow. This one's a little off. And then here's the other arrows off. These are off because 
one of these isn't sprung back correctly. But what remains the same is where this arrow lands on this key link or this chain link and where this one does. So mark these so you know where to line up your new ones. I, exactly, you're not messing around with the keyway. I'll show that too. Okay, I'm gonna grab my 17 now. Pretty sure it's a 17 on the side of the crank here, or on the for the tensioner, which is in that plug. Nope. It's a sure 17. Nope, it's not an 18. Now you can reset this tensioner, but I don't recommend it if you especially if you have high mileage because the teeth wear out and it can jump time. So you can reset these, but these teeth can break off and then jump time anyways. want that. Okay, so let me mark these now. You can also pop this thing off, just apply a little bit of pressure right here in the middle. A thin screwdriver. Just a tiny bit, just enough to slide it off. Get a new one of these because you're probably going to break it. Okay. Let me get some paint for these real quick. I'm going to mark the, so this one lands in between these links. So I'm going to mark the center of these links. And then the top of this link. This one lines up with this link directly in the middle. Go ahead and color this pink, this one. And then this one lines up in the middle here, so. Just don't, don't, don't go too crazy handling it because you'll lose your marks. It'll wear off. Then. What am I looking for? This thing. Just do one of these at a time, so that way you don't drop, risk dropping your chain down there. Go ahead and take that all the way out. Then you got your, this will come off. There you go. There's one cam gear off, and they're marked. Intake and exhaust, this one's intake, so let me grab my parts, I have no idea where they are. Alrighty, it is the next day because I forgot the cam gears in my car, but you wouldn't have known that if unless I said something. Alright, so I got the new cam gear here in the box. Let's take it out of the box. I need the intake one. So let's find the intake one. There's a core on these. How do you open this box? And the first one I got was... Intake. So, I'm take the intake one. And I'm gonna line up the arrow that I made, or the dot. 
see here's one of the the marks here there's this mark and this mark this mark lines up with the other can this one lines up with the up <laughs> I'm a real I'm a real comedian this line up here and I should be able to Sometimes you'll have to turn the crank maybe just a little bit to get some slack in your chain. But just line up your old marks. It only wants to point straight up and down. I don't know why it's not going on there. There we go. You have your old bolt. You can kind of tell if it's in there too because you can tell how, the, how flush it is. On the face of these, with the, this is like really dark, huh? Yeah, I wish I would have made this brighter earlier, but anyways, you can kind of tell how if it's good by the face of the the gear is kind of flush with the other gear next to it. Okay, that one's on. Let's go take this one off. For the upper chain one, upper chain guide. And just kind of squeeze this in here. Give her a click. And she's good. Now I have it on TDC. Not that it matters. Grab your chain chain tensioner. Chain tensioner. So here's what you have to do. That's very important. <clears throat> so when you screw your chain, oh my god, I can't speak. When you screw your chain tensioner in, it's not yet released. It'll stay in this position. You can run it, and it'll never come out of this position. So what this has is there's the teeth inside here. <clears throat> this thing is just over one position. So what you need to do, screw it in, and we'll do it together. Don't worry. But I'm just gonna show you what's gonna happen. So I'll pretend that my hand's the chain, or my finger's the chain, and it's just slack, it's loosey-goosey. And if you screw this in, it's just loosey-goosey. What you need to do is spin the engine back and then it'll stiffen up the chain. It'll push this pin in just enough. You'll hear a click and then you'll hear this ratchet out. You'll hear the teeth. So I'm going to throw it in now. Now you should be able to do that with this upper part on. And if you forget to do it, you don't, it doesn't matter. You don't have to take this off or you don't have to, um, 
I'm seeing here. You don't have to have this on to do it either. There's different steps. I always found that just, you can either leave it on or if you're just kind of rushing through and you forget and this is off already, you haven't gone backwards and then forward again, it's fine. Find my socket for chain temperature. Nope. My chain tension threaded in a little bit by hand. Now I'm just gonna grab the socket. <clears throat> now, if you guys don't know, I don't really ever torque anything. I'll torque these, which I will just torque to 90 newton meters, let's just say. All right, got the tensioner in. Probably like, I don't know, I guess if I were to guess, it would probably be around 30 Newton meters. So here we go, we're gonna go ahead and put this in. So I'm gonna spin the engine counterclockwise about 10 degrees or whatever. Well, you won't be able to spin it much because it's not where it's gonna go. Okay, they had the one click. And then now when I go like a push. Now when I ratchet, when I turn clockwise, you're gonna hear it click. And that means it's out. Go ahead, and then we're good up there now. Pop that off. Okay, and then uh, now I'm just gonna Well, I only got one of these. <laughs> there should be two, but they go on either side. I'll just flip it till it fits. Give you the same part numbers. Stick them in there, and then hopefully I didn't break one of these. Yeah, one of these came out. I mean, it's kind of broken, but it'll still work. I'll have to make it work now. It sucks. That's where those go. Don't forget those. And then we'll get this. Uh, Show you a trick so you don't screw yourself over by putting the butt plug in the side that blocks the tensioner. But I'm just gonna clean this up and get ready for reassembly with thermostat. All right, I'll be using the 3M. It's the 3M, it's the, uh, where's the part number? They sell it at the dealer, it's the sealant. Um, I don't know what the part number is. It's just black RTV. It's what they always use. So you're just gonna go ahead and I'll show you the bead that I lay. It's just a really small half. Okay. If you do buy one of these, just get a caulking gun. Go ahead, stick the tube in there with the black thing on the end. It makes it much easier. So this thing will just tear your hand up. Wanna go on the inside of the holes. You don't have to go around the holes. Do circles. Take your finger, smudge the RTV. Oh god. Got stuck there. It's about a one to two millimeter bead. People can complain how much I put. Blah blah blah. I put a little extra there at the top. And then there's also this area. Uh, let's see. There's this area here. And here, kind of where, uh, I don't know what you would want to say there, like a casting where this upper portion meets the lower portion. So I go ahead and I always just stick a little extra. Always where pieces meet, like cylinder heads and to the block, or I just stick a little extra there. I don't think that I've got. I did 
not get the o-ring for this but you're okay to use it a second time depending on if it's terrible terrible go ahead and just here's the bead they laid you can see just on the inside of the circles and then i'll just go ahead and throw this in now Two of the longer ones go in the bottom and go through the thermostat hole. That's what it is. Fuck, that thermostat runs through. They're really long. Long, long. Well, at least two of these go. Two long ones go. Sorry. Two longer ones go through the thermostat housing area. Fives for the upper. <sighs> They're getting real old. I didn't even torque these yet, <laughs> so I'll take the cam magnets off and torque them now. And I took that thing off. Son of a gun. See? 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 Stay in school. I'll stick that back on and stick some bolts through there. If I have any long enough. something else that could potentially leak oil, which would be stupid magnets. Yeah. 
That was silly. I carried away. And I'm gonna have to use a wrench on that one. Oh my god, what a pain in my butt. Alright, let me get that. Alright, should show my mess up there. Maybe some of you were looking at your screen like, when is he gonna tighten those? Maybe I should, I don't know. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these to 80 foot, 80 Newton meters. Oh my God, do I really have to put some on this horse? Mm -hmm. That'll be fine, feels fine. That ain't going, that ain't going nowhere. Put these stupid magnets back in. You have to take these magnets in and just walk them back and forth, like twist them. And then they'll, the O-ring will seat. So twist, twist, twist. It'll pop right in place. And you can put your bolts back in. Silly, silly me. So we got this, these are torqued. Pull this back off. Set that to the side, I got the magnets in, I got all these tight down here. Start plugging in all my stuff now, I believe. Cam magnet. Got the fan dangle boost solenoid here. Down here, 
clips on the side here. Don't forget that you have a super short E10 for this ground here. Sensor, thermostat, one more for map sensor. Okay, we can put this uh, power steering reservoir line on. Duke. Easy, but hard. So you got your hole on the side, and what I like to do is kind of walk it in a little bit. Don't put it in too far. So if this is, ooh. you know, if you're on the face, I can't really show it so hard. It's, it's so tight in there. So if this is like the hole, if you try to do it like push it in like this, it's just gonna keep going like this. Or if you try to just smack it real hard, it goes in the motor, and that's a real pain in the ass to get out. So what I like to do is make sure just a little bit of sticking, not, I don't put it so far in and then turn it like sideways. That doesn't work either. So you just start a little bit on the edge and then um, and then just kind of work it. And then, so when you push this side in, so it'll be like this, and you eventually hammer this side in, this side won't be in super deep. So I like to keep this sticking out a little bit and I hammer it in and then hammer it in. I mean like just use anything hard. So I just stick it in. And then I make sure one side of the lip is sticking out. The whole thing is like one isn't inside it too far. And I just go ahead and I take a, a socket here. Uh, where are we at here? And then that's it, that's all I used was this. <laughs> little tiny taps and it came in one side's in a little deeper but it's not too crooked that I'm worried about it and don't use anything smaller than the hole because that'll knock it through like I'm about to All right, um, so I got the plug on the side. I ended up using just, I ended up going from the bottom. It's way easier so you can see. Um, just kind of get it started on the left side first. Then I just tapped it in with a tiny little hammer that I had. I try not to hit directly in the center of it. You don't want to knock it all the way through. So then you're not going to have a good time. I put the alternator back on already. I did that uh, off camera. I just threw it in um, way easier from the bottom. So if you're going to do it, do it from the bottom. 
just to get all the, the lower bolts were super easy from the bottom. I think that's what I usually do is do the lower bolts, then the upper bolts. Clip, clip the clamp, clamp. Get in, we'll slide this hose in the bottom. There we go. Okay. And then just don't forget to clean up your pulleys. Uh, so when you put your belt on, you don't get stuff all over it. Pretty straightforward from here. Just gonna put the valve cover back on. Um, like I said, I gotta be real careful with this one. Cause when you stick the valve cover on, you can bust this off. But once it's the valve cover's on, it holds it in place. So I'll see what I can do. Kind of sucks. Dang it. Yep. All right. Cool. Um, I don't know much more I need to show here. Um, you know, fill up your cooling system with uh, coolant and put on this hose. I guess I'll show how to put on the hose in a minute when I get there. Try to get the serpentine belt here. They're all pretty much routed the same on every Mercedes. So it goes around the top of the AC or power steering. Under the, through the bottom of the crank pulley. Then, <laughs> if this is gonna make any fucking sense at all. Over the top, so then around the crank, over the top, then over to the tensioner. So then you go over tensioner, back, over the top of the water pump, down to the alternator, up, under the <laughs> middle idler. This doesn't make any sense, but see, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna run it over off this idler first. Get on this pulley. Fill that pulley on the tensioner on the water pump. On the alternator, halfway off. There we go. And then it shouldn't be hard at all once you get it on there. Super easy. Mm. 
Bam. Belt's on. You can see that. Uh, all right. Now, again. Hose and let's grab the new intake. Get on our blow dryer, get the inside of this thing off. I always do take this off. Take this rubber piece off, put it on the turbo first. And then keep this up. Careful, it gets this clamp really hot too, so don't touch that. about on the intake pipe. Line it up with the turbo. Hit your head. <clears throat> Way off here. Way off. Right. I dropped two right in front of my face. Oh, what the? F there it is. I think I look for that plug. Blends in with the floor. I'm only missing one. I'll find it eventually, so I'm not worried about it. Cool. And then I'm gonna throw the coils in. And blah blah blah, and then the heat trick works on those pipes, on all these pipes, because they're all pain in the butt. This thing does not just want to stay on there. It's right there. That's all now. Yeah, fill up your power steering first, uh, and don't forget your coolant oil if you drained it and that's pretty much it uh, pretty straightforward job 
yeah, that's it. All right, cool. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Adios, essays.